Hi guys, here I am back with another video for you today and I haven't done a video on bottles. Perfume bottles. Are you a fan of uh, gorgeous looking bottles? Do you buy your fragrances for the bottles, the presentation, or do you buy it for the juice inside the bottles? For me, it could be a toss-up. It could be just for the bottle itself. Most of the time it's for the juice, but then if I have a most gorgeous bottle and presentation at the same time with the most amazing scent, then it's a winner. So today I've got 21 fragrances that are the most gorgeous and striking looking bottles. So if you want to find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday we're talking about perfume bottles, the most gorgeous, the most striking looking bottles. And the colors and the, the shininess and the presentation all go into these uh, bottles to make them look very, very beautiful. And I love these. Uh, so if you've caught some of my previous or past videos on bottles, um, there's some that are carried over from those videos. And of course, there's uh, some new ones, uh, new bottles in this video. We'll go ahead and get started with the first one. I'm talking about Diptyque's Benjoin Bohème, this one right here. I think this is one of the most beautiful bottles. And if you haven't heard already, let's see if I can get this focused in. Um, it's not focusing. But if you haven't heard already, this bottle is going to be discontinued. They're moving Benjamin Bohem into Diptyque's black bottles for all their eau de parfums with the gold front, not the plain black and white front. So soon that's what it will be and this bottle will no longer be. So if you're a fan of this bottle and you still don't have a bottle and you can afford it and find it, get it because pretty soon this will be gone and moved into the EDP bottles. But the juice itself is all about benzoin and it has styrax, patchouli, and sandalwood. I think it's one of the most beautiful bottles. One thing I should also say, there was a whole collection of bottles like this in the past. During the pandemic, Diptyque discontinued them and now we only have Benjoin Bohem and of course course, since they only have one in this bottle series, they're moving it into their regular EDP. So Benjamin Bohem, the current version, I think is one of the most beautiful bottles. So let's try a fragrance I haven't spoken about from the house of Alexander J. This is Imperial Peacock right here. I think this is also a very beautiful bottle. In fact, this brand has bottles that look like um, bird cages. Uh, I don't know, that's what I get from the bottles themselves. Maybe they are kind of interpretations of bird cages, but they really do have some beautiful bottles, and I think this one is a beautiful bottle as well. It's Imperial Peacock, which is basically a vanillic fragrance, but some has some fruity freshness in there, contrasted with the vanillic touches. And of course, it's got some nuttiness, some tonka, some spices, and some other powdery notes and woods. But I think this is definitely a beautiful bottle. I don't know if you're familiar with this house, but uh, really one of the most beautiful and for me it's uh, the clear color um, or the clearness of the bottle um, it's the glass but then the, the cap itself is plastic I believe but um, I, what I like about it is the contrast of the gold uh, peacock that's on the the front of the bottle so this is Imperial Peacock from Alexander J I really like that bottle and I like that scent and of course I really wanted to have that bottle because of the scent but it's a winner because both the bottle and the scent itself are just gorgeous. Then moving on to the house of Bodicea, the Victorious. This is um, Harmonious, this one right here. So this was a visually striking bottle. In fact, uh, when I was at Selfridges in the UK, it, I think it was an exclusive there. I, I think it, it's still an exclusive, but my eyes went right to it and I found out it was, it was an exclusive. On top of that, I found out it has kind of like a Diorum Intense, Diorum Parfum kind of a DNA. So it was kind of a winner. It was my very first. I, wish, I shouldn't say very first. I guess I've had a couple of other bottles, but this was my very first currently on the market bottle fragrances. But I think these bottles are beautiful. The silver against the colorful glass bottles are really, really beautiful, I think. I can't remember if they have gold. Uh, I think they do have gold, come to think of it. But on the back, you've got, um, as you can see here, 
um, uh, the the name, but uh, really beautiful, I think. These bottles are beautiful, so definitely visually striking, gorgeous looking bottles, definitely great to have in a collection. Sometimes these bottles are also great to display just all around. Uh, I think they look beautiful. If you're not a collector like me and you have maybe like 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 bottles and that's it, you can kind of display them around some places around the house and they kind of, uh, you know, add some dimension to the decor that you have. So moving on to the house of Luban, this is Corrigan. Uh, I like the minimalistic African look of this particular bottle or this series of bottles. There's Corrigan, there's Akkad, there's the Idol, maybe there's another one. The Idol is black, I think the Akkad is uh, amber colored. But what I like about this is the whole African look. Um, uh, it's, um, I don't know what this material is for the cap. But uh, Idol in the black bottle used to have even more of an African themed eau de toilette version. Uh, and then of course the more simplistic look of the eau de parfum bottles. But this is a great fragrance in that it's kind of a unique lactonic milky musky fragrance. But even though the bottle itself is kind of boring all by itself, I think um, the cap does a lot to give it some life and make it very visually uh, striking. Your eyes go right to it and that's what I like about this bottle. Luban Corrigan is such a unique fragrance. If you haven't sampled it, please do. I think if you like lactonic musky fragrances with weirdly kind of caramel notes, I think you're gonna like that one. Guys, if you haven't checked out Scent Club Kit number five, it's on the market now and it's selling. We've sold out pretty much half, a little more than a half of the kits and we will run out soon. Uh, but uh, it's a great collection of fragrances. There's three samples, five mLs like that. And the fragrances themselves are uh, perfect spring fragrances. We've got Fleur de Lalita. Um, we've got, uh, I wouldn't call it, we've got Wake Up World and we also have Oolong Tea. Uh, three great fragrances from three great indie niche brands uh, uh, that you guys definitely uh, would love to s discover. Uh, so if you haven't checked it out, I have a link in the info box. Please go uh, check out the fragrances there. Moving on to this wonderful, beautiful box. This is, this is Ruby Red from the house of the House of Oud is what I should say. So the fragrances of the House of Oud are really beautiful bottles, but I feel like Ruby Red is one of the most beautiful. I like that whole shiny kind of, um, uh, you know, like magnified blood running through vessels kind of a look of the bottle. I really like that about it. It also looks like kind of berries perhaps, maybe pomegranates crushed up, very dark blood red, and I love that about this bottle. The fragrance itself is really delicious as well. It's candied ginger with ginger blossom, ginger, actual the ginger root, and then some elong. So it's a ginger balm with some flowers. It's a delicious fragrance, but these bottles look beautiful, really, really beautiful. Just on display around the house or in a collection or just you know, on your dresser or something. And the fragrances are also very, very unique and I like that about them. So moving on to the house of Miles Wambao, this is Hot Shot. Are you guys familiar with this house? Uh, they've got fragrances that look like this. Very visually beautiful bottles. And they almost look like lighters or something to do with guns. Look at that. Um, my eyes right there. <laughs> um, the fragrances are great and this particular fragrance is vetiver with vanilla, cardamom, tangerine, jasmine, sambac, created by Dominic Ropion. But the bottles themselves are really beautiful, I think. They're really unique bottles. I've never seen bottles like this. They're visually beautiful and they come in different colors as well. And this is kind of a spicy, woody vanilla fragrance with some light citruses running throughout it with a bit of a floral touch as well. So that's Hot Shot, Miles Wambao. Are you guys familiar with that house? So the next fragrance I'm going to talk to you about, or bottles in general, I should say Miles Wombau bottles are all like that, but they're different colors. And then same with this one. The bottles are all very similar with different colors, but I felt like this one was one of the most original with the whole kind of an, I don't know what color flag this is, but almost reminds me of um, Italian, but it's not the Italian flag. This is Alcut from Electimus 
London. Really love their bottles. They're also very, very heavy duty and they also come in very heavy duty presentation. They look great and they're really, really beefy kind of bottles and the fragrances themselves are really, really beefy as well. This to me is kind of an ambery, musky, ambergris, a smoky oud and musk fragrance. I also get leathery touches in there and perhaps some jasmine in there as well but uh, really love the bottles and I like that whole sturdiness. And they also fit my hands really, really lovely. And they're beautifully visually uh, gorgeous and striking as well, as you can see. And I picked this one because I like that kind of um, white, uh, glass part and then of course the colorful flag looking part there. So this is Alcoot from Electimus London. Going to the house of Royal Crown, this is Nocturna. Royal Crown bottles are also really beautiful but I feel like Nocturna is one of the most beautiful in their collection. I like this whole gradient looking color from kind of a purple in the bottom that goes up to more like an orangey yellow up top. And the fragrance itself is really kind of a musky vanilla that's not uber sweet and syrupy. And I think the ambergris in here kind of tones down the uber sweetness of the vanilla. And there's also some peony in there, some floral touches of course, some light melon touches which uh, kind of adds a bit of a watery kind of aquatic fruitiness in there. But I like these bottles and um, I really like the caps, of course. And the caps are really kind of uh, uh, very kind of royal. Of course, it's called Royal Crown. And of course, I think uh, Dolce & Gabbana copied them, didn't they? Because these uh, this brand was out way before um, Dolce & Gabbana had the, the crowns. But either way, this is Royal Crown Nocturna. If you haven't checked that out, definitely check that out. I highly, highly recommend it. Up next, going to the house of JCB or Jean Charles Boise, a wine entrepreneur here in Northern California who also has fragrances. This is number 13. So all of the fragrances are very similar, different colors, but um, they're really nice looking bottles. I think they're really gorgeous. And here we have like the the theme of the, the bottle uh, top is like a barrel, a wine barrel with grapes inside it. Uh, I think that's what it is from what I remember him explaining. And the fragrances themselves are all created by Olivia Giacobetti or Bertrand de Chaffoul or uh, Marc Antoine Corticchiato. This one is a Olivia Giacobetti fragrance. It's kind of a fresh, lightly smoky, sweet, not sweet, I, I wouldn't call it an uber sweet fragrance, but there's some sweetness under there and resinous touches. But there's definitely the idea of sandalwood and light smokiness running throughout it with oak and things like that. A really beautiful bottle. Uh, if you haven't seen my videos on this house, definitely go check it out. But I think this bottle is really gorgeous. And I think it's definitely has an idea of like, uh, what do you call it, like an ink, when you dip the ink into the bottle and then you write with it. It kind of reminds me of that in, in general, but the bottles themselves are really nice, especially when you go into the, the black bottle or the red bottle, there's a purple and also a green. Anyway, this is number 13 from JCB. Let me know if you guys uh, know that house. Uh, I'd like to find out. So this next bottle is really, really beautiful and I like the color all purple or violet in this case. It's J-U-S Quiricine, this one right here. It's a leather uh, with violets. So if you like the idea of violets and leather, definitely try this one. And this one is definitely a violet candy with leather experience. So if you like that idea, definitely check this one out. But I really love the bottle. There's something about this bottle that reminds me of Alice in Wonderland. I don't know why. Something uh, that kind of era or kind of cartoonish or, or uh, quirky a little bit, but very, very, very striking. When I first saw these uh, bottles at Selfridges in Paris several years ago, I thought some of these uh, bottles are really cool. They have more unique bottles like this in the collection, and they also have plain bottles with uh, a lot more fragrances, but I felt like these are really, really original bottles. But a uh, very nice bottle, very visually striking. It's gorgeous, but still kind of on the playful side. And again, as I said, the, the fragrance itself is a leather with violet, like a candied violet leather. So this is Quiricine from JUS. Let me know if you are a fan of that uh, fragrance. 
and what do you think of that bottle? This next one's from the house of Stefan Humbert Lucas. This is called Bahrain. All their bottles are like this, so uh, there's colorful ones as well. And I need to really dig into this house. I miss them at Exence, but they weren't really at Exence. They were in a hotel outside, and I had an appointment. I, I, I forgot to go, although it was overlapped with other appointments. But the, the brand makes really, really beautiful fragrances. There's a lot that I like that I've smelled, but I haven't really dug into them. But I really, really think their bottles are beautiful. There's definitely a Middle Eastern styling to them. Uh, and all, um, I really love the cap and everything about the, the, the bottles themselves, as you can see. Uh, who's a fan of this house? Let me know. Put a comment down. But I think these are one of the, some of the most beautiful bottles. At least to me, they are. This is Stefan Humbert Lucas Col de Bahrain. Uh, let me know if you're a fan of the, that one. All right, up next, going to the house of Widian. This is Banias, this one right here. Now, I like Widian bottles, but I felt like Banias was one of the classiest in their collection. And I really love the red. The red is just really really striking it draws me in wants me to pick that bottle up and smell the fragrance that's what I like about bottles because if they're beautiful bottles I want to smell what their juice is going to smell like inside it if they're ugly bottles I might not pick it up unless somebody tells me that's one of the best fragrances in the ugliest bottle kind of a thing but this one is kind of an aromatic woody fragrance it's got lavender and oud and uh, geranium and patchouli and things like that so I don't think this is one of the the most amazing fragrances from the this series of uh, collection of fragrances but in the end the bottle itself is one of the most gorgeous the fragrance itself is definitely very very wearable leaning on the masculine side but uh, the bottle I think is just really really beautiful what do you guys think uh, do you like that bottle? Let me know. Put a comment down. All right, so this is a brand new fragrance in my collection and uh, if you remove the cap it's the most boring bottle but the cap is the most dramatic and amazing cap and the fragrance itself is also really really great this is rain de saba paris and it's divine temptation this one right here created by matthew nardan you guys familiar with this this is brand spanking new i brought it back from milan uh, after i discovered well i discovered the brand on instagram and then i found them at zor in milan and I had to have this one. This one smells fantastic. But as you can see, the cap is just really, really beautiful. Uh, and um, the bottle itself is plain, Jane. And as you can see, if you remove the cap, uh, the bottle itself is kind of boring. But look at that. It looks like, um, like a little hat or something for a bottle, as you can see. And then it just fits like that. The fragrance itself to me is sweet notes, ambers, there's vanillic touches, but there's not much written online about this fragrance and the brand itself is relying on master perfumers to create each of their fragrances. This is created by Matthew Nardin and then that I've smelled the one that's created by Michelle Almarac, which I really liked. And I really also like the one that's created by Anne Flippo and then also Nathalie Lorson. Uh, I smelled, I, I believe I smelled every single one of them and those are the ones that really stood out for me. But this one, this one from Matthew Nardin is really, really beautiful. Really great fragrance as you can see. It's a visually gorgeous bottle. What do you guys think? Let me know, put a comment down below. But this is Rain de Saba. Paris, Rain de Saba Paris, Divine Temptation, and I discovered that they actually have a store in Paris, and I'd like to go the next time I'm there. So anyway, check that house out if you haven't already. Um, this is a really, really beautiful bottle. There's a series of three fragrances from Nishane. This is Shem, and Shem is the one with the green glass bottle, but really love the actual metal part on this bottle. Uh, reminds me of snakeskin for some reason. I don't know why that is but really love the bottles. These bottles are gorgeous. I didn't really care for Neffs. Shem is actually really, really great fragrance. It's a leathery rose, and there's also this kind of a smoky Cipriol note in there. There's Elemi resin, really beautiful, very, very Middle Eastern style, oudy kind of leather. But I don't think there's the oud in there. It just kind of has an oudy experience when I'm wearing it. But this bottle is beautiful, and I really love it. This is Shem from the house of Nishane. If you don't know that house, um, well, I'm sure you guys know because they're pretty popular. So this next bottle is really, really gorgeous. It's a new bottle from uh, Zerjoff. This is Astaral, this one right here. And what I like about this one is that <clears throat> it's not the reflective uh, cap. 
I have a difficult, difficult time photographing a lot of reflective bottles. Uh, this one doesn't have the reflective uh, cap on the front, as you can see. This is Astaral, and I feel like this is a great collection of fragrances uh, from um, uh, a collection called Kemi that moved into the regular lineup of um, uh, Zershoff fragrances. And then this fragrance itself is a, a new release under the Kenna Kemi collection. But this has notes of moss, rose, Shamama Accord, Oud Labdanum, Amber Wood, Violet, Anise and Amber. Really beautiful and I think the bottle is really beautiful. I feel like Zerzhov has great looking bottles in general. Really love a Cento Overdose. The whole gold kind of uh, plated looking bottle is really, really beautiful. But right now I'm really digging the look of this um, Kemi series uh, of uh, bottles that um, I think are great and also very easy to photograph because, like I said, they're not reflective. So going to the house of Atelier Desors, this is Lune Feline Extray. Now I don't have one of the very fancy bottles that have all the gold on top halfway through the bottle. This is one of the, the less expensive bottles because they have these more high-end luxurious bottles that have gold running around it. Uh, and then you can see part of the gold flakes floating around like this. But I discovered this house in January of 2015 at Javoy, and I instantly bought the first fragrance from this house uh, called Lumphaline. This is the extract version right here. And I think the reason I gravitated towards this collection is the gold flakes, beautiful, very art deco design, and had to have a bottle, you know? That's one of the reasons. The extract version of Lumphaline is just a more amplified, intensified take on that kind of musky, balsamic, vanillic, ambery, vanilla fragrance, but this is the extract version. Most people, most of you guys probably know the original Lumphaline, but man, uh, a great collection of uh, bottles and uh, a great collection of fragrances. Uh, most of them are created, all of them are created by Marie Salamagna. So next, go into the house of Tiziana Terenzi. This is one of my favorite Star, sea stars collection fragrances. This is Telea. And I like Telea because the font on it is kind of different than the rest of the uh, font on the, the fragrances. So uh, also the fragrance itself is quite nice. It's kind of a fruity, musky, ambergris fragrance with uh, woods under there. And I really like the bottle. It's beautiful. It draws you in with the sea star on top of it right there. And yeah, I really like this uh, bottle. The collection is really, really nice. I felt like the actual white bottle that sits inside the aquarium type uh, case was a bit too much, but the other bottles themselves are really, really nice. And I think my favorite in the whole series is this um, uh, blue one called Telea. Let me know if you're a fan of that fragrance. I'd like to find out. And then I can't, I can't skip uh, Raja Parfums. Their bottles are really visually beautiful. This is uh, Parfum de la Nuit number three. Really sexy, leathery fragrance, ambery and also spicy. But their fragrances are beautiful, luxurious, and then their bottles are also very luxurious as well, as you can see. Really uh, kind of uh, attention to detail and their um, you know presentation is uh, top notch. But really beautiful, uh, strikingly gorgeous bottles, as you can see. That's Raja Parfums, Parfum de la Nuit number three. So I can see skip this one. I gotta highlight this brand as well. I think they have great looking bottles. This is Fragrance Dubois and I'm going with PM for producer Michael. And I really like the cap. The cap on this one is really visually stands out. I think red is one of the most beautiful colors for me on bottles. Like I was just showing you this ruby red. Really beautiful uh, in the harmonious that I showed you. Really beautiful, and so in uh, PM from Fragrance Dubois is also really, really beautiful. The fragrance itself is kind of animalic, leathery, with tuberose kind of floral notes running throughout it, and definitely this is a, a collab with producer Michael, who uh, did a collab with Fragrance Dubois. But I think their bottles are beautiful. Their caps are really nice as well, as you can see, very, very high-end and luxurious. So this is PM from uh, Fragrance Dubois. And I can't forget this one, really cannot. This is one of the most beautiful bottles. Not the original, but the extract. This is Maison Francis Kirk Jun's uh, Baccarat Rouge 540 Extra. Really love the fragrance, really love the bottle. Visually, it's striking. The red color, once again, really grabs my attention. There's definitely a limited edition one that's even much better, much more luxurious, also much more expensive. And the juice itself is very, very sexy, has great trail, great longevity, and all that good stuff. It's ambroxan, ambergris, saffron, almonds, uh, jasmine, and musk. So that's Baccarat Rouge 540 Extra. 
And then last but not least, we're going to end the list with... Um, it's an unranked list, guys, so I'm not ranking uh, the list of bottles. But this is Jazil's Gala. It's all gold, uh, really beautiful, very, very luxurious, very, very classy. And what I like about this is the stamp on the back. Really love that about this uh, bottle. All like red on the top of the gold. And so it's, it's, it looks very, very expensive to me. The fragrance itself is very animalic and it's very, very rosy. And it's interesting, I've had people smell it and they love it and they don't like animalic fragrances. And then I've had people smell it and they're very sensitive to animalic fragrances and they're kind of like, they can deal with it. So I don't understand how some people who don't like animalic fragrances really like this fragrance and then some people that don't like animalic fragrances really react negatively to it. But it's definitely on the animalic side, but it's an overdose of rose with oud and things like that. A really beautiful fragrance. You've got to be into animalics to appreciate this one. And that's Jazil's Gala. And that's the last fragrance for you guys. I've got three bonus, no, four bonus no, three, four, four. <laughs> I've got bonus uh, designer fragrances that I left off as bonus options. But what are your thoughts on these bottles? Are you a fan of these bottles? And do you have a favorite, most gorgeous, luxurious bottle that you'd like to highlight? I'd like to go check them out. I really do like... Uh the presentation of fragrances and as I said most of the time they're th the look of the bottles is what really attracts me the presentation is what attracts me so uh, if I see something that I really like I'd like to have it in my collection like this I needed to have one uh, from the um, Rain de Saba in my collection it's a great fragrance it's also a great looking bottle even though it's simplistic and plain as you can see I think that cap is very very dramatic Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have a favorite fragrance bottle, most gorgeous, striking, put a comment down so I can find out. But other than that, thanks so much for watching. As I said, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, we've got four designer fragrances I'm going to talk to you about, first of which is from... Um, uh, Christian Louboutin and this is Luby Charm, this one right here. So Luby, oh, Christian Louboutin fragrances have the most amazing caps and I feel like Luby Charm is the most amazing out of all of the caps. Uh, also there's a series of three fragrances that are darker bottles and then the majority of them are red bottles and then there's also one that's kind of like a cream colored co uh, bottle bottle but I feel like this is the most amazing as you can see and you've got the red on the sides here as well and these are taken from the soles of the shoes that Christian Louboutin puts under the shoes that they make. I don't buy their shoes, but I've read that that's what this uh, is and that that's uh, what they've used. The same material that uh, goes into the, the soles of their shoes is on the caps here. Uh, and the fragrance itself is a Chypre. It's rose, patchouli, kind of oak mossy and things like that. So definitely really beautiful. And I have to highlight this one. I think this is a beautiful bottle. Very masculine, very classy, uh, very black, um, and uh, a great not looking bottle. I think what's going to happen is the entire series of Pasha, the Cartier fragrances, will go into bottles like this. They'll be smaller, they'll be refillable. But what they've done to it, and I think is very, very classy and very, very strikingly beautiful. I like the black color in that one. And then this one from Tom Ford, I think it's really beautiful. Noir Extreme Parfum, all gold very very classy and the scent itself is really really delicious it's a, a great uh, interpretation of noir extreme the eau de parfum and now we've got the parfum it's intensified made more luxurious and then finally this feminine fragrance it's another cartier it's la panthère parfum one of the most beautiful feminine bottles you know i never really cared for the original la panthère fragrance bottles but the parfum man they did a great job with it sorry i don't have the juice full in here but uh, I think this is one of the sexiest bottles. All the cutting of the glass is really, really amazing. Anyway, that's the last fragrance for you guys. And once again, if you haven't taken advantage of the Scent Club, please do. It's linked in the info box. Um, it's going to sell out soon. So get it before it sells out. And thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow. Bye-bye.